Hello, and welcome to another episode of the B2B Leadership Podcast. My name is Nils Vinya, and today my guest is Bill Stakos. Bill, welcome to the show. It's great to be here, Nils. Uh, thanks so much for having me on. I'm excited to, uh, to have this conversation. Same here, man. Can't wait to dig in. But first, would you share with me and our audience your role that you're in today and the company that you work for? Sure. Uh, I work for a company called Medallia. We are a customer experience management platform. So not just helping businesses of all sizes listen to their customers through surveys or other signals that they're capturing, but being able to analyze that feedback in one platform and act on it in the platform as well, as well as looking at that all those signals through the journey and being able to act through the journey. So my team is called Industry Solutions, um, and I lead that team globally. And you know we're we're essentially a group of of heads of customer experience or employee experience from other Fortune 100 or Fortune 500 brands. And you know we provide industry expertise to our clients and others who are looking to engage with the company. Outside of wow. that, my day job. Yeah, no, it's a really interesting role and great company. Outside of that, my day. Outside of that being my day job, I also host uh, a weekly podcast, which you know, you're, you've been gracious enough to be a guest on, um, called "Be Customer Led," and um, it's an exciting, um, exciting platform for me. It's been a learning, great learning and growth hack, and yeah, we've got listeners in over ninety countries now, so it's been uh, it's growing, wow. so it's pretty cool. That's phenomenal, and it was a blast uh, my episode with you. So thank you for having me on your Absolutely. podcast. And- Definitely check out Be Customer Led. Uh, it's near and dear to my heart because customer is at the center of everything, Absolutely. as I know it is to you and the whole Medallia crew. Um, what you were saying there is really interesting, and I know so much has evolved in the last, I don't know, even just five or 10 years yeah. in this space. Um, give us a sense for like kind of where where that entire journey is and tracking and Medallia is today as, it, as compared yeah. to just a few years ago, because I know things have changed so fast. Yeah, I think, you know, one, the company really, it started off like in the, in the hospitality space, really is helping um, organizations understand what their customers are saying about them and how to act on that at scale. So, mm. you know, whether you are the manager of a hotel in a specific location, whether you're a front desk person, whatever that is, like how are you leveraging feedback from your customers in, in any format? Um, to, to, to really affect positive change for your customers day in and day out. You know, over the last, you know, five or 10 years, the technology has really evolved, right? AI and machine learning has become central to customer, the customer and employee experience discipline for that matter. And now we're also at another point, an inflection point where it's not just um, how do you aggregate all these signals and really make sense of all this data, but also is how do you start to think about this from a much different perspective. And that is a journey driven perspective. So Hmm. not just transactional level, you know, uh, you're a customer and you go into a branch and you provide feedback or you call the contact center, you provide feedback on that experience. And maybe you put on something on social, et cetera. It's really understanding you as a customer, you go onto your phone, then you go to the web, then you call the contact center. It's really pulling all these pieces together and being then being able to not only automate a next best journey as a customer. Mm -hmm. So you stay engaged, but also not just the machine doing the work. If you need a human being involved to really jump into that journey and engage you as a customer, we obviously we can do that through the technology as well. So a lot of data and automation, and that's kind of the next, next big shift in paradigm for us. That's pretty amazing. I mean, just thinking about those multiple touch points, the systems, the volume of data given the clients that you work with. I mean, it's kind of mind blowing, (laughs) to be honest. It it really is. And obviously, the bigger, you know, your organization, the more data that you've got access to, um, trying to figure out what the right data to use is, of course, and, you know, how does that make sense? Um, But really, an important, if you're in customer and employee experience, I, you know, over the long term, I just don't think that you can be successful unless you have a platform like Medallia's in place yeah. supporting you in the company. Agree. And I'm, I'm just glad that Medallia exists because I know <laughs> we've all experienced a few, you know, the large brands where you've yeah. had a less than stellar experience and you're just like, come on, can't you guys use tech in a little bit better way to give me a little bit better experience? Sure. I'm not asking for as much. I just want a little bit better. <laughs> for sure. For it's sure. coming. It's coming. <laughs> cool. All right, Bill. So 
Um, let's rewind the clock a little bit. And yeah. why don't you take us back to how you got into your very first leadership position? Oh, boy. Um, well, I'm an older guy, so uh, that's going to go a ways back. So um, this is probably going into maybe like mid 2000s even. So let's just say 15 to almost 20 years ago. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, one, it started off with exhibiting leadership without having direct responsibility for a team. Um, and that was really about understanding the business at a broader strategic level. That was really knowing my role and how it creates value in the organization, thinking of innovating inside the box plus innovating outside of the box. And ultimately that said, okay, you know, Bill kind of gets this broader perspective um, you know, he could be leading a team. And I was really advocating for myself then at the time as well to get into a leadership position. I was coaching and mentoring other other team members. I think that was very visible uh, for other leaders in the organization and, you know, went into a management role. Now, it, not to say that it was a failure per se, but, you know, uh, a couple of things that i now looking on having so much more experience leading organizations, you know, back then, it, it still felt, if I can think about sort of even myself as an individual, it felt a lot, Nils, like it was a stepping stone for me. Mm -hmm. And even now today, I hear people say, I want to be a team leader because it feels like it's the next piece and progression in my career. And my advice has always been, and I would just tell that person, Bill Stakos, 15 years ago, plus you have to want to see other people succeed besides yourself. Mm-hmm you have to really love people like and love your team and put them in front. And, you know, if, if you are going into leadership or you want to be a team leader, have a big team or a small team for that matter, because you think it's the next step in your career, it's just not the right reason. And I've, and I've even just counseled people, you're not ready yet for that reason. Yeah. I think it's really interesting how you saw both sides of what leadership could be. Right. And if we equate this kind of the evolution of leadership, your father being a bit more strict and, and stern, right, was probably the earlier days of leadership in the professional world. And your mother being yeah. more empathetic and really investing in people is kind of where things are now. And That's you right. got to see both of these as a young child growing up working in the family diner in the family business. <laughs> I think that's just absolutely fascinating. Yeah, it was really cool to be in that environment. And, you know, I, you know, you still see leaders who are stern and strict. I mean, there's not, yes. that necessarily hasn't gone away. I mean, just some people are, you know, red on the disc or, you know, whatever the um, D on the disc or red and other kind of, you know, leadership style kind of uh, frameworks. Um, and, you know, that's their approach. And depending on where you are, I guess that still works. I think that, you know, particularly over the last five years and certainly accelerated, you know, due to the pandemic, I think that, Leadership has now evolved into not a know-it-all, which you would find it that more maybe stern or strict individual, but but a learn-it-all, right? Um, yeah. You know, um, Satya Nadella, I think, is kind of like trying to get Microsoft to be a, uh, a culture of learn-it-alls, right? So, um, I, you know, th and that's really important for me to focus on. I certainly don't have all the answers. Um, there's incredible talent on the team, and you know, but but together we're gonna we're gonna we all create and add value in, in different ways and we're going to come together and solve big problems. So that's right. That's no, that's fantastic. Um, not having the answers has been a core theme throughout most guests on this podcast. And you know, if there's, if there's one thing everybody should take away from every episode is that stop having the answers. <laughs> Your life will immediately get better <laughs> as a leader. I, I agree. You know, and nails, not to say that I ever thought that I had all the answers, but you know, much like you're learning through this podcast, right? There's Absolutely. different approach. There's different approaches. There's different yeah. ways of doing things. And, you know, I talk to people all the time. I'm like, gosh, why didn't I think about that 10 years ago when I had the same problem? It would have, <laughs> right. come, it would have been a much better result. Right. So, um, that, that humility and that, you know, sub ab ability to, you know, to just t give yourself the grace and the space to be able to say, I don't have the answer here, but I can yeah. go figure it out with you or for yeah. you, um, yeah. is really important. Absolutely. And it's that, you know, coming at it from a collaborative perspective. And yeah. when you are the facilitator, the world changes. When That's you are right. the authoritarian, the world changes. Yeah. <laughs> One's probably going to be more productive than the other, but For they sure. are very different in For that sure. case. 
So you mentioned something else about that first leadership position. You said, I, I understood the business at a broader and more strategic level. Tell yeah. us a little bit more about what you meant by that. So I, before joining Medallia, I was in financial services for over, you know, for 25 plus years. Mm -hmm. And um, I was really fortunate to be able to see every part of financial services from investment banking to commercial banking to retail. So I really knew how the money wow. flowed and how that worked. And um, being able to bring that perspective um, as well as, you know, b thinking about the types of clients and, and the personas in each area of the bank. And even if I was in wealth management working at the time, um, how that really made sense for other parts of the business. And just because you mm -hmm. were a wealth management client didn't mean that you were also a retail client. So really thinking about the end-to-end -end relationship that a, that, a, that a particular type of customer could have with their financial services provider and really trying to make decisions with that kind of broader mm -hmm. level mindset. So, and, and bring that into conversations with other leaders um, and letting them know that I'm, I'm thinking about that as well. And that, and that is important to me. Um, I think that, you know, that showed the leaders that I was interacting with on a day-to-day -day basis, um, that, you know, I'm something that I'm someone who thinks globally about the bank, not just geographically, but also from a broader business perspective, I was thinking about solutions in the context of the strategy of the bank at the time. Mm -hmm. and really trying to connect the dots that way. And also just thinking about people and who was strong at what and how do we, yeah. you know, how do we leverage them or how can I, how can I partner with someone who is stronger in one area that I was weaker in um, to maybe get the job done. That's fascinating. And I love how you like, even the experience that you had way back in that first, getting into that first leadership role is so applicable to today. Right. It it's is, about yeah. thinking bigger than yourself. Think of thinking bigger than your team, your org, your department, your even sometimes even your company. Is that's that, right. I mean, that still holds true today, right? It, it is. And I think it's important, particularly because if you're in a leadership role, Niels, because you you know, part of your role as a leader, and you know this, right? Like you need to be identifying opportunities for your people. Yep. yep. And making sure that maybe this isn't the right role for them. Right. Mm -hmm. But there is a great role given their strengths somewhere else in the organization. And if you as a leader are not taking that perspective, if you're just very focused on your business line or your silo for, you know, sorry to use that term, you are you are doing a disservice to your team members. Yeah. And those individuals, you know, if they don't have maybe the motivation to go find new opportunities on their own, they're going to leave. Yeah. Um, yep. Right. 100%. And um and I think that is a really important part of leadership to have that broader and global perspective and engage other leaders across the business for the, at the very least, to be able to identify and create opportunities for your team. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. And in, sometimes like the individuals will be able to facilitate some of those things on their own. Yeah. Sometimes they won't. And that is a big part of the leadership job, identifying opportunities for the people on your team and being aware of where their strengths and are and where they lie and how you can solve a bigger organizational problem if you use That's them right. in a different way That's or right. if they get to engage a different way. And if they're aligned with their strengths, they'll do an even better job. That's exactly right. Everybody wins. 100%. <laughs> totally right. We, if that all happened, we would not be in the great resignation today. <laughs> you know, I... I, I wonder, I mean, so I, I want, yes, that's part of it. I think I, uh, you know, I think the work from home piece has also reflected, you know, has made people, some people reflect on not necessarily is this the right role or company for me, but is there something else out there that I maybe didn't recognize I wanted yeah. and now I know. Yeah. And I can't, I, I don't want to lay all the blame on leaders or companies, right? I mean, there's, there's, it's more nuanced than that. I know a lot of the press likes to focus on that stuff, but, um, there, there is something else there out there to it. That's, that's, you know, caused the great reflection as I like to put it to him. So I, I think that's a, probably a more appropriate way to talk, to term it the great reflection, because it is <laughs> reflection that leads to resignation. That's it's right. the first yeah. step. Yeah. You can't, you don't resign unless you've done the reflection that's exercise right. and kind of yeah. know that, hey, this isn't working out yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. And I, I think it's in part, um, you know, certainly some of the factors that exist within organizations and people coming to reflect and the realization that, you know what, this, I'm not beholden to this environment. I don't have to sub, uh, subject myself 
to this kind of environment, whatever it is, that's right. if it doesn't align, there is opportunity that has never been there before. And that's a very empowering thing. It's a very freeing thing. It's probably a bit terrifying for some people as well. I'm sure. um, because sometimes shifting jobs is one of the most stressful things, period, even though it seems like the world does it in this point in time. But that element of you know being in control, and I, I call this being the CEO of your career, like that has to continuously get stronger and stronger and stronger across the board because the time at which people are invested inside of a company and invested inside of a team and it just continuously shrinks right mm -hmm. the average tenure inside organizations 50 years ago was a lifetime that's right <laughs> now it's two years like that's it so you know as leaders a big part of our job and i'm curious for your thoughts on this is to empower the people who work for you to make sure they're as successful as possible in yeah. whatever function success actually means. Yeah. Maybe it's not in that role. Maybe it's not even that company. That's right. Your job is to ensure they are successful because that will build a tremendous amount of rapport and trust. What do you think of that? So, so two things that I want to touch on. One, just the CEO of your career. Because um, one thing I want to do bring up is all CEOs need a board. And you yes. actually need a board for yourself, a, a professional board of, of not necessarily mentors, but people who are going to ask the, the tough questions of you to make sure that you are on track and that you are growing. Right. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of, you know, your point around, maybe it's not even the same company. I, I tell people like go interview elsewhere. You never know where the moonshot opportunity is going to come, frankly. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I personally don't want to be the person that's, or the type of leader that holds people back either from, you know, getting access to that moonshot. So, but what I do ask is at least be open and honest that you're going to go on this interview. I'm not going to put you on some naughty list and you get a smaller <laughs> bonus or whatever. Like but Double secret really, probation. Right? Yeah, right? So, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> now we're really dating ourselves. Um, so, um, but the, but the, important, the important part of that is, is really get people to focus on their careers and what they want to be doing. And not necessarily yeah. like five or 10 years out. I mean, if anything, the last two years has taught us like, who the hell knows what's going to happen in two, five years. So, yeah. you know, I have a shorter term plan. Um, but really giving them the tools to think creatively about where I can be going as an individual, as an employee, as part of this workforce, the value that I want to be adding. And does that align with my own values? Mm -hmm. um, back mm -hmm. to your point there. So Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And great segue into this next piece I want to get your thoughts yeah. on, which is, the level of responsibility and ownership on that thread between the employee, the individual, and the leader themselves. We've been talking about a little bit from the leader's perspective that you gotta be looking for opportunities and doing these things. Yeah. However, I'm curious for your take on what is the employee's responsibility in this scenario? And I'll share my perspective after you share. Sure, I'd love to hear your perspective. I look at it as a partnership. I mean, you know, if it's just, if, if all the work's on me as a leader, I've got to wonder how successful you're going to be in any, in any role, frankly. Yeah. If yeah. you're not showing that motivation to take on responsibility and accountability for your own growth, um, that's tough to advocate for. Yeah. Um, so I really do look at it as a, as a partnership in, in, in that growth. So I'm going to look for things um, from that individual to try and be clear, at least to say, here's what my strengths are. Here's what I think I'm good at. What have you observed? Getting feedback from peers or other leaders around their around their strengths, areas of opportunity, um, and even potentially coming up with a role that maybe doesn't even exist that aligns mm -hmm. to those strengths. So, you know, and then it's up to me as a leader to kind of say, okay, where are the walls in front of you to achieve this? And how do we break them down yeah. as quickly as humanly possible to help you achieve that goal? So um, for me, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very yin and yang. I mean, it's very like e equal yeah. parts. And if it's not equal parts, it's tough to... Um, it, it's not a, a recipe for just long-term success. Yeah, uh, and I and I do agree with what you said there, and I'll add the the color that um, there's there are equal parts, but there is a driving force, and the driving force has to come from the individual. That's my piece. Like that CEO of when you were the CEO of your career, you were the only person who can make the call on what's right for you. Period. Sure. Nobody else. Sure. Not your boss. Not your company. Not your CEO. Nobody else can make the call on what's right for you. So you have to be in the driver's seat. However, your manager or your leader, whoever you work for, is absolutely there to play that 
yang to your yeah, yin yeah, yeah. with the drive to say, but you got to start, you got to start it. Right. Yeah, and yeah. that's the key piece that I see. And I coach lots and lots of people through this is, all right, let's, let's take some control back. The organization yeah. is not going to lay out a golden path to this perfect place <laughs> that will work. set you up for your career period. Yeah. It's just yeah. not going to happen. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. But I hear what I would love to see is your idea on what is going to get you moving and what is going to keep you engaged and what is going to be really fun yeah. for you to work on. Cause that's the stuff that we need to solve for. Yeah. And then when you have those, some of those ideas and you want to have a discussion, then engage me and yeah. bring that to the table. And I will do everything in my power to help you achieve that. Yeah. Right. Cause like you said, if I, if I, as the leader, you know, come up with this great plan because I know you and these are your strengths and all that. There's a significant chance that you will not enjoy it because I made the decision and you didn't. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's a sure. huge risk for sure. There, there is like a couple. There, I have like had one team member. This is going back a couple of different jobs, but um, you know, this individual was extremely smart, knew the business very, very well. You knew that there was a lot of potential there but there was something holding them back that could have been bad prior leadership or whatever that was. Um, maybe just, and I would recommend no. And right to your point before yeah. in terms of taking accountability for your career. If I'm asking the questions on your behalf, like really what does that say about the person that the feedback is about, right? Um, yeah. And it can be intimidating depending on who you have on that list to, to ask feedback from. Um, I think that in and of itself shows leadership as well, right? You're not afraid to have or listen to feedback. You're coachable. Um, you're someone that's out there looking for ways to improve yourself, your career. Um, and by default, the company, right? At the end of the day, if you are looking to find new avenues to, to create value in your organization, and you're asking these questions, you want to deliver value for the business that you work for. And I think that 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 really speaks volumes about it, about individuals. I agree. And kind of gets back to one of the points you made earlier about, um, you know, seeing things more holistically at the business level. But yep. this is about seeing things more holistically at the individual level. That's right. And that is wonderful, incredible advice. All right, Bill. So um, coming in, you, you touched on this earlier, but I want to bring it back up. Last question here. Yeah. If you were to sit down with your former younger self way yeah. back in the day, getting into that first leadership position, knowing everything that you know today, what advice would you give to your younger self? Um, absolutely be in a leadership role. Um, it is one of the most rewarding things that you will ever do personally or professionally. Um, really make sure that you're investing as much time in the development of the team as well as the individual. Mm-hmm and really try and shape the team in a way and bring talent in, one that not only is diverse, but also diverse in terms of race, color, et cetera, but also in terms of diversity of thought and skills. Yeah. And if you can do those things and really, really truly love your team every day and look out for them, mm -hmm. like they are your own family, you will be successful as an, as an individual, you will get joy from it, and you will be successful as a leader. And those individuals will always remember that relationship and they will always come back and want to work for you. Isn't that the greatest feeling in the world? It, when there's nothing you could better. call up somebody like, I'm sure you could call up somebody from one of those first teams that you led or 10 years ago, teams that you led. And it's almost like, you know, no time has passed in between. That's right. And hey, yeah. I've got a role. Do you want to come? Work? Yes. Right. Let's, when, do yeah. I, when do you want me to start? Right. Like even, even better, more important in the leadership position, if you join a new company, join a new role, whatever, and everybody expects you to have a Rolodex. And if you have not lived some of these principles, that Rolodex is going to be pretty short in yeah. terms of people who are, would jump at the opportunity to come work for you. But yeah. when it when you do employ these uh, these principles like you've been talking about, the line just goes out the door yeah, and then yeah. everybody has an opportunity to improve. I think that's the ultimate compliment as a leader is if someone Agreed. says, I absolutely will come work for you again. Yeah. I mean, you've done your job. You've done a good job. Fantastic. Love it. All right, Bill. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to spend some time with you today talking about leadership, your background, your advice, and so much wisdom to share with this audience and myself. Thank you very much for your time. Look forward to continuing to hear about all the incredible things that you and the team at Medallia are doing. Thanks so much for having me on, Nils. It's really been a lot of fun. Take care.